Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gotham Chess Recaps. It's so good to have you, and welcome to the St. Louis Rapid and Blitz. This is a tournament with many Americans in it, as well as some players uh, who are from other countries. It's part of the Grand Chess Tour. It's live, it's over the board, and the way it works is there's 10 players. The first three days are rapid games, three a day, and then there's two games, uh, two days of just Blitz chaos. Um, as always, I'm gonna take you through some of the best day, some of the best games of day number one. And if I'm a little bit slow during this recap, just understand I'm recording it at nearly 11 o'clock at night. This is the fourth video that I'm making today. I've had a very long day, uh, but I love what I do. Love y'all. You know, we got a good thing going on here, so let's just jump right into it. So, two of the players involved in this tournament: Sam Shanklin, who's coming off an amazing World Cup, and Richard Report, who's like top 10 in the world. And don't sleep on Richard Report. D4, Knight F6. It's just that he hasn't been super active uh, in recent uh, times. Now, in this position, Sam Shanklin plays a fascinating move. Normally, Richard Rapport is surprising his players in the opening. Here, in a mainline Catalan, white usually castles. There are basically no other moves unless you want to play a very early queen c2 to defend your pawn. Shanklin plays b3, which doesn't look like he invented the wheel or reinvented it. Um, He's just defending c4, and now Rapport plays a5 and a4. And this is super common. Anytime a b3 pawn is placed like this, you can launch your pawn. And this does look like uh, just a free pawn, but first of all, it's not because c4 is hanging. And even if it's not taken, you're not really going to tell me that doubled isolated a pawns impress anybody. Okay, so bishop to a3. Shanklin goes for an exchange of bishops, and in a couple of moves, he actually gets it. Knight takes a3. Now, there is still a bit of a tension here between the pawns. For example, if black takes on b3, then this only helps white, because white then moves the knight and trades the queen, uh, the, gets the queen, sorry, in the corner, trades the rook, and, 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 and keeps going. But Rapport's just coming in with the horses. I mean, my man has shown up uh, to the kingdom. He's got the two horses there side by side, and he's like, let's, 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 let's get some, some good stuff going here. Rook d1, queen e7, knight to b5. And this move applies a little bit of pressure to the c7 pawn and uh reports like go ahead and take it come on sammy you want to take this pawn he didn't actually say that to him because he can't talk but you know anyway a3 okay so a3 attacks the knight i mean this was sam's entire plan right queen e7 knight b5 bishop d7 a3 this is the whole idea here to kick the knight out of b4 uh Except here, report just takes. Wait, what about the knight? Yeah, what about the knight, Samuel? I don't know why during this game Richard is just verbally calling Sam different names. But in my... Yeah, like, what, what about it? I have two pawns. I mean, two is less than three, but it's not that much less. I mean, it's quite literally the next integer, right? So, and now the threat is B2. Like, I gotta pass pawn. And the, the bad thing is, if you try to defend it... Now I'm, I'm, I'm here, and remember that night I perched outside of your kingdom? Yeah, a lot of, lot of weird English words being used here. Um, knight back to e1 is what Sam played. It's really hard to guard this. The truth is, if you play a move like rook f1, it looks like you do the job. But then dc4, now, now it's 3 to 3, now you're not even up any material, your knight is hanging. See, I mean, you're about to get absolutely blown off the board. So, knight e1 played, knight takes f2 and um, queen c4. And so now for that investment of uh, a piece, Richard Report has an extra pawn. He has four pawns for the piece, connected past pawns, and now to boot, Sam just gives him the rook to try to get the rook back there, but knight e3, and um, well, R Richard's still gotta win this game, so let's see if he can do it. b5, bishop f3, b4. Well, <laughs> yeah, he has a lot of pawns. It's gonna be really difficult to do something about them. Uh, and uh, Sam can try his hardest, but unfortunately, this is all going to roll down the board. Um, and it, 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 I think that the second one of those pawns moves, Sam will resign. And uh, yeah, I was not joking. B2. And this was a really interesting game by, by Richard Report. Uh, and it was, a, it was kind of an opening experiment gone wrong. Not quite, but... Let's put it this way. The position opened up a lot of dynamics, and uh, Sam actually was doing very well, but this move kind of threw him for a twist, if that's even a saying. 
because uh, A3 looks good, but yeah, Knight C3 was required to get the Knight out of there, and a really nice idea from Report, just like, I don't need my Knight. Only, on, only Knight I need is... I, anyway, uh, game number two. This game is actually from round number two, because uh, remember, they have, they have three rounds. Um, this game... Not too exciting. In fact, this game, you get a very, very brief summary. Like, yeah, it was a Petrov defense, whatever. Not, not super interesting. The game becomes interesting in the endgame. Because Peter Svidler is up two pawns. He, you see, he has four, and Shakri Armand has two. This is completely winning for white, but where it gets tricky is that there's knights on the board and you never know what can happen with knights. I mean, one moment they're on g6, next moment they're trying to kick you in the face. So, rook c1, rook c8, and, and Svidler's doing what he's trying to do, but he blunders a fork. You see knight d3, he blunders the fork. It's rough. I mean, rook come here, you know, you, you, you had to go rook c3, and then black can play like knight d7, for example, to try to go after the pawn. You push, he goes after it, you push. Knight can't attack a pawn diagonally, just in case you forgot. Welcome to Gotham Chess Recaps. Um, but he blunders the fork. And now it's most likely a draw, but also the fact that black's pawns are kind of weak uh, means that white has some winning chances. He gives a few checks, gives a few checks. And actually, Shakri Armand Mijar was like, bro, I'm going to put my king right here. I'm going to put my knight right here. I'm going to shove this rook down here. You're going to get mated. Like, me and you were going to mate, consensually. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to checkmate you. It's going to be great. But, yeah, Svidler um, looks to be on the, on, on, on the way to a draw. Uh, rook c3 played. Knight d5 attacks the rook, gives a check, and goes for this. Now, Svidler is obviously uh, a member, um, and uh, sorry, a subscriber of the Gotham Chess YouTube channel. He understands danger levels, right? So, h4 check, king goes back. Now... Here's how this went. Sviller picked up his king. Okay, he, he hovered it, he moved it to f3, but he didn't let go. He realized that king f3 is a terrible move because there's a backwards knight check. He had like five seconds, right? So he's hovering the king there and he's like, damn, well, I can't really do that. Okay, I'm gonna go here. And as he put his king down, he lost on time. He couldn't figure out what to play here, and he grabbed his king because he was going to go here, here, here. That was what he wanted, but he didn't realize, or maybe the g4, I don't know, well, actually g4 would be bad. So probably king e3, and if knight f2, maybe knight f6 or something. He picked up the king, realized there was a fork, went here, and by the time this king landed here, he had lost on time. So Peter Sviller loses the game on time after being two pawns up in an endgame. Like, what do you want? <laughs> Damn! What? <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, now we move on to round number three. Round number three was nuts, okay? Uh, cashew. Um, maybe a Brazilian. So, in the final round, every game was decisive. There was five games that were decisive. We will end with Hikaru, because obviously the video is called Hikaru's Over the Board Return, and, and that is a big deal, obviously, um, considering the fact that he's been basically a professional streamer slash YouTuber the past like year, and it's exciting to see him back, as well as some of the other players. So we will save his game for last. One game didn't get included. Uh, I'm very sorry. Uh, wasn't as exciting as the others. So we're going to begin with Shakri Armand one of the best players from Azerbaijan, top five, top seven maybe in the world, and Le Quang Liam, number one player from Vietnam. Okay, so Mamid plays a move which is so strange. He plays this. Now this really only is a surprise weapon. Uh, White is essentially playing a Scandinavian now because it's a Scandinavian, just you're playing with white. Now, normally the queen goes to a4 in the Scandinavian, but Shark puts it one square back. Bishop c5, bishop f4, castles, and he goes this way. By the way, notice that Liam plays d5. Now, d5 is a very just direct move. Uh, basically, if you take it and attack the knight, you open up your king and then you die. That's it. Open up king, die. That's it. So, d5, the best move for white is to take with the knight to try to keep the e-file closed, uh, and again, try to take with the queen to keep the e-file closed, and then the queen can, like, come out here, and if g3 to block, like, the queen, you know, it, it, yeah, it, black tries to play against white's pawns in the center of the board, um, 
And uh, White just says, I'm a pawn up. Haha, you're trash. And uh, the game goes on. But Mamidyarov plays long castles and now d4. So uh, the knight is forced back. Now bishop 2e6, developing another piece. And by the way, black is on the verge of winning the game with knight b4 and take on a2. Now the bishop is there too. So he has to play a3. Queen e7. And now the rooks are connected and there's a looming maybe sacrifice. Uh, so Mamidyarov's got to play fast. He plays here. He doesn't trade. Uh, gets his queen out of the way. Gets his bishop out of the way of danger. And uh, plays bishop d3 and h4. He's like, look, man, uh, I got to create an attack. Now, what's funny is that the position here, according to the machine, is minus 3.5. What? 15 moves into a chess game, two 2700 rated players, white is dead lost? Even though only one pawn has been traded? Looking like guess the elo out here. Why is this dead lost? Well, um, c5 is a good move. I think it's the second best move. The, the computer is like, I don't know what white is doing. I don't know what white has smoked, but it's certainly potent. And it's not going to result in anything positive. Knight h5 kicks out the bishop, and like there is just no attack. Like if you play something like g4, uh, black is just much faster. Like you can take over here, that's nice. I take over here, I'm just much faster. You can take my second knight, that's nice. I'm much faster. I'm gonna open every. I'm faster. All right. So h4, c5, h5, c4, hg. C kind of the same thing happens without knight h5. Queen d3, rook c8. Now, it looks like you can take this with check. Uh, you can. The thing is, it does nothing. I mean, you take with check, and I take with the queen, the king, or the... the I literally can take with any of these three. So, e5. I mean, it's really difficult to fight a full army of pieces when five of your pieces are on the first rank. I mean, did anybody talk to Shakhri Armamidyarov prior to this game? Like, give him a little pep talk, like, develop your pieces, Shakh. Children are watching your games. They want to learn from the best. Clearly, he was not interested. Um, bishop c4, danger levels. And by the way, you can't danger his level here because here, here, and you get mated because all your pieces are on the first rank. So there you go. Things get weird after 11 o'clock at night. Queen d2, bishop b3 takes, and Le Quang Liam plays a nasty move. Queen e3. If you take, it's this. And you know what the worst part is? You know what the worst part is? If you don't take, like the game ended with this, this. White resigned. But like, let's say like, why? Why did White? Well, what if you don't take? He had to take back because that was check. This is made anyway. You have no choice. Rook c2 and it's guh -gu. It's next game. It's, it, that's it. We, we're done. 24 moves. It, 23. 23 moves. Like Wang Liam wins with black. Might have been like, one of the easiest games he's ever won. I mean, he beat me in, in a classical game once, but that, that was probably the second easiest. Crazy. All right, let's go to the next game. The next game, we have Fabiano Caruana, obviously playing, versus Jeffrey Zhang, obviously playing, one of the strongest players from the United States. E4, C6. Now, the computers nowadays really like knight f3 and d3 against the Karo Kong. And... The idea of the computer is this. If this, 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 right? Queens get traded instantly. The engine on a high depth actually really prefers white here. It thinks that c6 removes the natural developing square for the knight. White already has a quick lead to the center of the board. And modern engines actually really like king mobility. They like when a king can have a lot of access to certain squares and isn't tucked away or locked away somewhere. Um, and like bishop g4 is normal, it's like to pin, but... Um, that's actually why Jeffrey goes g6. He doesn't want to get tortured. But the problem with g6 is now you are playing a modern Gurganidze. Levy, you just sounded like you like burped aggressively. Yeah, um, it's a tough name to pronounce. Uh, but uh, the point is this, like uh, e4, c6, d4, uh, d5, like this. This is what you're playing now with black. And this is not good. You have a lot of better options, bishop f5, c5. G6 against this structure is not good. But after you play G6 now, white forces you into it. Yes, white lost a little bit of time because now it's kind of like, look, it's like E4, C6, D4, D5, E5, G6, Knight F3, Bishop G7, and it's supposed to be white's move. But it's black's move. Huh. But uh, 
Black should play f6. That's actually the way black is supposed to break out of this. But h3. Now I'm going to try to prevent your bishop from developing. Oh, you're trying to get it out. Okay, let's get this bishop off. Did, did the dude just do this? Did he just double his d-pawns? <laughs> Fabiano likes double d's. I mean, what, what do you want me to say? Um, the thing is that now it's all about the light squares. It's about the light squares. It's about the damage structure but center control. Knight d7, queen e2. And he's just trying to shove this to e6. So Jeffrey has to play it. Castles, knight h6. And now he takes. And now my doubled pawn, right? With that doubled pawn, I've got this target on e6. And let it be known that I'm probably going to win that pawn at some point. Queen f6, rook e1, there I'm going for it. Jeffrey gives it to him. He gives it to him because if queen e6, now you cash in, um, d4 is going to hang. You just, this isn't going to work. I mean, I, I can also go to d8 and c7, probably. But uh, knight d2, Fabiano slow plays it, plays knight b3, stabilizes his center. Bishop d2. And Jeffrey plays e5, and, and, and Jeffrey is um, kind of solving his problems, I must say. Bishop b4 attacks the rook. Jeffrey plays knight d6. Knight d6 blocks the direct attack of the bishop. But it opens up another problem. If I ask you to look around and say, what in black's position is not guarded? You would say, well, obviously this pawn. And I would say, yes, you bozo. And what else? You would say, oh, this knight. Yes. And that knight targets the center and defends this. Remove the defender. Knight c5. And um, black is lost. If knight takes c5, I danger your levels. And now you have a skewered knight over it's two knights over here all right that's a problem so knight c5 de b6 jeffrey goes for a queen sack gives gets the queen back but when the dust settles it's caruana he's got a rook for a knight and uh he wins this in very easy fashion he just plays rook c1 he's got c6 as a weakness jeffrey goes c5 Takes here and c6. He tries to pin the pawn to the rook and Fabiano just pushes straight through. Really interesting opening experiment. I don't know if Fabiano gave away a little bit of preparation here because the engines loved it. They loved it. Um, maybe he slightly misplayed after that, but I will say that right here, the machine preferred white tremendously with this move g4, uh, just going after the knight. And the idea of g4 is that if the knight rotates, now you go bishop g5 and then and only then you take because the bishop cuts away the king squares. So takes, takes, and the knight is lost. So g4, maybe Fabiano like had that somewhere in his prep. Maybe not because after knight h4, it's still mildly unclear what's going on in this position, as nice as it looks. But yeah, um, little caro mini lesson and Fabiano takes care of business in 20 moves as well. Now, this game, this game was insane. Wesley So, Sam Shankland... Uh, it was a Slav, uh, and it was a slow Slav, a quiet Slav. Bishop f5, knight c3, e6. This is known as a slow Slav because um, the, uh, the car broke down. Zaporozhets? Is that like the old name of the... Or Lada? Some Soviet cars? Knight, never thought you would hear about Soviet cars in the Gotham Chess YouTube video, huh? Spasibo Bolshoya, comrades. Bishop e4. F3, bishop g6. This is an idea in the slow Slav which revolves around white getting this bishop. But black basically will say, yo, clown, all the time you spend getting this, I'm going to play hg, I'm going to open up, I'm going to play queen c7, knight d7, and I'm going to try to attack you. So queen b3, and all of that happens, but Wesley takes first. It's like, Sam, what are you going to do? Sam takes with the c-pawn. All right, bishop d2. Maybe I'll castle long. Maybe I'll play rook c1. I mean, you put your queen there. That looks real nice for me. Knight c6, and now I'm going to castle queenside. At some point, and only some point, will I take this, and it's right now. This is under attack, so what do we do about it? We do nothing. We play king b1, which basically gives away the h2 pawn. But the thing about taking on h2 is that I also have something attacking something, and now your something has gone over here to take something and stop guarding that something, and that something comes in and attacks some, some more somethings, and uh, that's bad. So he doesn't do that. Knight d7, backwards knight move, bishop e7. 
bishop d3. Notice how Wesley made a short castle on the long castle side. Rook c8. And finally, Sam castles. Okay. So if the kings are castled on opposite sides, what should white play in this position? Just kidding. The camera didn't lag. Of course, h4. Of course. b5, h5. I mean, let's go. Like, you, you trying to do this? Or what? Right? It's like hockey fight. Like, we... We fighting after the next face-off? All right, let's do it. H5, G5. And here Wesley plays one of the most aggressive, nasty moves I've ever seen in my life. I'm not joking. I've played chess for 20 years. I have never seen a move more ab absurdly aggressive than the next Wesley So move, King to A1. I mean, my lord, does he even realize that chess is supposed to be a game played amongst... Ladies and gentlemen, with a game of esteem and class, I mean, what is this gore he is bringing onto the chessboard? Bishop b1, and do you know what he wants? Men only want one thing, all right? And it's to mate. And that's, that's it. That's all they want, and that's all Wesley's after. And Wesley is about to get it, but he gets swerved. Now, queen h7 is still very much a move, and you can go all the way, but you're not going to get the goodies, and you're going to have to take the walk of shame back home. A lot of... An a lot of euphemisms right now. I don't know what's going on here. B3 to kick out the knight because he doesn't like it anymore. And now bishop b4. Wait, sorry? Bishop b4? Yes, bishop b4 because knight takes bishop. Uh, there's a queen hanging here. But first, we must give this check. Not to chase, but to not lose our own queen. Okay? Zwitschenzug, in between move. You're welcome. Bishop c5. E5, knight c3. He's going for this. And the second the king's escape square is covered... <laughs> Hi. How are you going to protect against Queen H8? Oh, that's adorable. Sam is setting up the pieces for the next game and trying to run away. Now, sadly, you can't uncastle. That would be pretty cool. But yeah, King E8, King D7. So now what is Wesley going to do? Well, the king wants to hang out in the center of the board, right? The king wants to be safe in the center. So what do we do this center? We open the center. Chess is not super complicated. You could also be a super GM. Open it up. Bishop d4. Why? Why is he doing that? Levy, you just said open the center. Why is he closing? Because he's opening up the e-file. All right. Queen a5. Now let me, not let, let me not lose my knight. Rook e8. I'm pick up a pawn. All right. Now Sam here is like, I got to do something. Knight c4 check. That does look pretty scary. I just take it though. And there's no threats. So now I just take another pawn. I told you this king's not going to feel very safe. Queen e6 is on the way. Oh, Queen e6 is on the way. And this pawn, by the way, like if all the pieces get traded, this is gonna survive. Alright, it's like a like a like a like a nuclear explosion, and then a plant grows out of the crack on the sidewalk. That that's what's gonna happen right here with this H pawn. And everything can get decimated. That H pawn will be decisive. And uh, while the king ultimately ends up getting stuck directly in the center of the board, and uh, it was in this position that Sam called it a day. We have been seeing a lot of pieces banished to the back rank in this video. Alright? Um, yeah, wild games today. Uh, the final game of the day belongs to Hikaru Nakamura and Peter Svidler. Um, it was Hikaru's return to OTB. And if you made it this far in the recap and you came to the... Hey, if you skipped ahead by clicking on the timestamps, by the way, I am so mad. You just skipped 23 minutes of juicy ad revenue. Go back. Hey, go back. All right, here we go. Hikaru drew his first two games. This is his third game. E uh, D <laughs> that is not the right first move. Let's do that again. D4, knight f6. You know that with Peter Svidler, you're gonna... Peter Svidler plays the Grunfeld, but against knight f3, the Grunfeld is not as venomous. You kind of wait for this knight to come here so that when there's a trade in the center, you can trade on c3. But Hikaru doesn't, doesn't do it. So now there is no Grunfeld. You can't play a Grunfeld against the guy who doesn't want to play a, a Grunfeld. He'll just go e4. So c6 is normally what Grunfeld players do so that they can still play the move d5. Now, here, if cd5, cd5 happens, we have complete symmetry. The game is over. We can just end the recap now. But Hikaru doesn't do that. He plays queen b3. And this kind of induces black to do something. Either take on c4 to create imbalance or play a5 and a4. So now we have symmetry but one guy randomly has a pawn on a4 and you can't just be like actually come back i don't want you over there just bring it back here 
So castles, castles, knight c3, and, and Svidler tries to justify the a-pawn by playing the move queen a5. So we're going to have a game. Bishop d2, knight c6. There's no, no scary discovery on the queen. e3, and the queen slides back to a6, patrolling over here, and maybe in the future b5, but for now we're going to battle for the light squares. Rook e1, and bishop f1. He's like, hey, hey, Peter, you, still, <laughs> you know my bishop can see your queen, right? Peter's like, yeah, he, he, I'm not trying to make it to guess the elo. Queen a7, h3. The point of h3 is to play the move g4 h5 the point of h5 is to prevent oh, the point of h5 is to prevent g4 chess is a logical game knight h4 another example of knight h4 as we saw in the last game uh, with wesley and shankland knight f3 bishop f5 and here hikaru did something bold this has never been done before by any super grandmaster in history hikaru did not repeat moves this is a historic day let it be known from this point forward that August 11th, 2021 will be the day that Hikaru Nakamura changed history at the super grandmaster level of chess. He did not repeat. Rook fd8, bishop g2. Slow game. What are we trying to do here? All right, we're trying to jostle. It's not clear what's going on. Rook c1. Swidler jumps in with the knight. Okay. Now, now Hikaru goes back. Now there's a difference. If you repeat moves now, then I can trade and damage your structure a little bit. Uh, maybe I can rotate my knight to f4. So knight takes d2, queen d2. Now the only thing that's happened is that uh, we lost two pieces. But one guy now has bishop pair. One guy has one bishop. So let's see. Bishop c8. And here, Hikaru plays a very interesting move. He's just given up his dark squared bishop. Six of his seven pawns are on the dark squares. He looks to be restructuring his dark squared complex. And then he played f4. And this is an interesting decision. Because it weakens your king... But that's in an abstract way. The king has no pawns in front of it, but this king's guarded by a bishop. What is this queen even doing on a7? <laughs> exactly, right? Look at that. You know what the point of this is? To prepare this. This is perfect example of how to use same side pawn storms. It's very rare. The first time I said something was rare, rare at super GM level, that was um, sarcasm. This is actually very rare to see a naturally forming same side pawn storm with the kings like this because one person just has more artillery right so now the question is at one point will hikaru press through and break through because the second he does he'll probably do something decisive or svidler is going to spend all his resources defending that side of the board knight f3 rook c2 queen d8 queen h3 look at this we've made one breakthrough h7 is juicy f6 ah there it is there's the weakening we need now knight h4 that's all we needed bishop e8 so there's tying his shoes together he's got no choice all right it's like grade school all over again rook h2 i mean everything is about to show and now the knight just calmly comes back to f3 it wants to get to e5 and the way you're going to get that the way you're going to get that is like this you baited all his pawns to come forward g5 very nice idea now f5 and now knight jumps in and Svidler needs to either evacuate the king or the dance floor. Rook takes c3. He goes for the counterplay. He looks to infiltrate on a3. Takes and push. Let's see if Hikaru. Queen h7 check. King f8. But now knight d7. And if king to e8, you take. And if you take, well, I take. It's just, I get two pieces and you only get one. Or the computer is so mean, it wants this. It says, don't even take that. Go threaten rook b7. Very, very nice game by Hikaru. I mean, chop, chop, chop. Didn't repeat the moves. And the second that he got just the right moment, he found the computer idea to create a same side attack. F4 is a very nice idea. Queen g2, bishop d3, and g4. All of that from here, that is a very high-level plan. Like, this position, if you give to title players to create a plan, f4, queen, g2, bishop, d3, g4, that is, that is high-level stuff. I mean, honestly, that is really, really impressive. So, a very nice game by him, and a rough day for Peter, who also suffered that, the game against Mamed Yarov. We feel for him, and I hope he's going to be back. Everybody loves Peter Svidler. And if you don't, the hell is wrong with you? Like, have you looked in the mirror lately and slapped yourself? I mean, please, put that on the homework. Okay, at the end of the first day of the St. Louis Rapid and Blitz, these are the players and these are their respective spots. Now, these games actually count double because that's just the way they decided it. So Fabiano has five out of six. Every Rapid game counts twice because there's less of them. The Blitz, there's 18 rounds. 
So Fabiano Caruana and Linye Dominguez Perez, who is popping off. The problem with Linye is he got a super, super, super positional style. Those games are very slow, suffocating your opponent. But if he has a big win tomorrow or the next day, I will feature him. It's just that these games today were totally nuts. It's just Linye plays very, you know, classical and very nice chess. Folks, I appreciate you hanging out with me for half an hour. Uh, I got nothing else to say. Go hang out in the comments. Spill some memes. Spill some dreams. I hope you laughed. I hope you cried. I hope you had a great time. And I will see you tomorrow for the second day of Rapid. Peace out. Get out of here.